Now, what are some things we have going on here during the week? Yeah, so uh, something so excited we have going on right now. We have our THP groups going on, and this is all about turning rows into circles. Yes. So we love to turn our church family really into a family so we know each other, and we're not going to church with a whole bunch of strangers that we yes. don't know. We want yes. to know each other, and we want to get to know each other, and this is so much fun. There's so many different groups that you can do. There's something for everybody. I'm in a small group where we read a book, and we, do, we meet every Sunday, and we go over that chapter chapter or there's hiking ones where you go to a hike and then at the top of the hike you do a Bible study. So there's something for you. Just go onto the THP app and just yes. go to the groups and look and find the one that you want to do and you will have so much fun. It's yes, and if you don't have the app, you need to download yes. that today. So the church app, THP Church, go look that up in the yes. app store. But if not, uh, maybe if you don't know how to do that or you just aren't interested, go to our church website. Just click on THP Groups. All groups are still open, so even though we're about midway through, you can still join a group. There's yeah. plenty of ways and pl well, plenty of different <laughs> days and times. Yes. I think there's a group that meets almost every single day yes. of the week. So depending on your work schedule, um, there's, group, there's a group for you. So yes. we got hiking. We have a Spanish uh, group <laughs> where they're going through the Bible in Spanish, I'm oh pretty sure. That's there's so a cool. writing group. Like There's many, yes. many amazing there's groups. There's something for everybody. Yes, yes. And then, um, like Savannah was talking about, our THP students are yes. doing a group on Sunday night. So yes. you don't want to miss out on that. But also, something going on here during the week is midweek. Yes. You're not going to want to miss this. If you are new to THP and you're, maybe this is your first time here, we're glad that you're here. <laughs> yes. But if you want to get more involved or come see us again, Wednesday nights are the place to be here at THP. We've got our midweek meal at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6 and uh, you can't beat it. It's $5. Yeah. And then what are some other ministries we have rolling on so we, midweek? We also have our homeschool co-op going on right now. So if you're homeschooled and you want something to do just to get your kids do, uh, hanging out with church kids and have that social thing, this is so much fun. And there's so many different things that you can do, and your kid will love it. You'll find yes. something for your kid to do. And that is going on Fridays. Yes. On Wednesday nights, we've got our nurseries, our kids ministry and they are knocking it out of the park. Yes, they are. Um, if you see kids running around today in bright colors, they're having a neon egg hunt. They yes. said to wear their Sunday best, so I'm excited to see all of them after church running <laughs> yes. around. But they're doing a egg hunt, well, a glow in the dark neon egg, egg hunt, hunt, I'm pretty yes. sure. And um, then the little kids are doing an egg hunt as well. So yes. super fun. It's yes. always exciting on Easter. <laughs> I'm excited to see all their prizes and things they get. Um, yes. But we are still remembering the real reason we're here, and that is the resurrection of Jesus. We're so thankful for that. But yes, if you'd like to get involved on midweek, please come see us 630 on Wednesday nights or at 5 for the midweek meal. Yes. And then we've got our men's fellowship. That's mm -hmm. every second so, Tuesday, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Cafe. They normally, they always have a great time. Yes, they, they got do. food, the word, fellowship. I mean, it doesn't take much to make them happy. So if you're a men, man, a man, <laughs> if you're a man, if you're a man at THP, or maybe again it's your first time, they would love to have you every second Tuesday here at the church. And if you yes. say, I don't know where the Fellowship Cafe <laughs> is, if you're looking at us, it's to our right, your left, in the back. So you'll see it in big bold letters above the room. Yes. And what else do we have going on? We also have our Project Renew going on. So if you're like, what's Project Renew? It's turning what's already here to, it's turning, renewing Reviving what's, here, what's here, here for, for what's, what's to come. come. Yes. That's a mouthful. It is. it is. So if you see, if you're in our church, if you're online, you can definitely go to our Facebook page and see pictures. But if you're here, you can see our main sanctuary and our cafe area. We all redid that and it looks so yes. good. The so coffee good. bar. Can we yes. just please take a moment for our coffee bar and yes. our baristas? <laughs> Speaking yes. of baristas, we've got so many great, amazing teams yes. we'd love for you to get involved with. If you've been coming to THP for a while, um, please get plugged in. Or if it's your first time, we have our Next Steps class with Ms. Jarrell on Sundays. It just kind of gives you a rundown of what we are here at THP, who we are, introduces you to the staff. So it's just very important um, that you go through this. And then you have the choice of membership at the end. Yes. So <laughs> it's a win-win. But, yeah, and then we have got our um, debt-free coming up and if you remember if you've been with us for a while last year we did a debt free 2023 we did this with the goal of paying off our office building next door um, in a year <laughs> and in six months it was completely paid off so we are super super grateful what a blessing it's been so we are starting debt free 2024 
or Debt Free 24. I don't know what the slogan is right now. <laughs> but we're doing Debt Free again this year in hopes to pay off this building. I believe it's going to yes. be a four-year thing. But anyway, if you'd like to give to that today, you can do so on our church website or our church app. Yes. But we're getting ready to dive into our second service. There's many ways for you to give this morning if you'd like to do so. You can text to give or you can download that church app. There's so many different things that you can do on our church app. And if you're new, that is the best thing that you could possibly do if you'd like to uh, get more info on THP. It has the Bible on it, yes. past sermons. What, what else is on that? There's, there's so many things. Yes. And you can see everything that's going on. So if you ever, if you ever hear something and you want to go check more into that, go to that app and you'll see it. You can go to what's happening. And yes. It'll that's, show you that's everything that's what's happening. The best. Yes. The best. Speaking of register, we do have our girls' day out coming up April yes. 19th and 20th. I failed to mention that earlier. Um, but the cost is $45. This is for girls, elementary through high school. It's going to be a weekend full of fun and the word. It's going to be a yes. quick little conference for them. Yes. But um, make sure you get those girls registered. You can do so um, on our church website, church app, or I believe out front you can do yeah, it too. I think so. You can't miss it, guys. You yeah. can't miss it. We're giving you every opportunity to sign up for this. But anyway, we're getting ready to dive into second service. Who is excited for second service this morning? I know I am. There we go. Yeah, there we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let the online community hear it. But again, we are so glad you're tuning in with us. Thank you for watching with us this morning. Uh, we're excited for this service and see what God's going to do. But we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Savannah, do you want to close us out I this morning? All righty. Okay, Lord, we come here. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the opportunities that you're giving us, Lord. We're doing so many things, Lord, and we I hope you know, Lord, we're doing it all in your name, Lord. And all the glory goes to you. We pray over this service, Lord. I pray that you have your way through it, Lord, and I pray that we, we see you move, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, THP. If you would stand with us this morning, we're going to get ready for service. Happy Easter, everyone. Can we give the Lord praise this morning as we get started? Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. Man, I'm fired up. I hope you are. If this is your first time with us, welcome to the Healing Place Church here at THP. We are family. Uh, hopefully, you've already had five, six, ten people say hello to you this morning. That's who we are. And uh, we're so honored you're here with us this morning. Uh, we've got an incredible service for you, and uh, it's not by accident you're here. If it's your first time, it's your 50th, if it's your 100th, you're here on purpose this morning. It's God's sovereignty over your life. It's His grace. It's goodness. You're here on purpose, and there's a purpose for that. So we're excited this morning. Uh, we always take this time at the Healing Place to pray before we enter into a time of worship. Uh, we have salvation cards, prayer cards that uh, you guys turn in every week. Uh, we believe in the power of prayer here at the Healing Place Church. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. We've seen miracles already in 2024, one of those being our pastor. Uh, he'll he'll come, come in on that when he comes up later. But, uh, man, we're just so thrilled you're here with us this morning. Uh, if you could, this is my last thing. We're going to pray. If you could, if there are seats towards the middle of the sections, if, if you guys would uh, scoot in, we've got a big crowd today. So we're, we're so excited about that. If you would, we're going to pray right now and get ready for worship. I want you to pray with me this morning. Amen. It's the body of Christ, not just one person. It's all of us. When we pray together, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is here with us. And there's no telling what the Holy Spirit will do in each of our lives this morning if we will believe and pray together. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's do that. God, we thank you for who you are this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here this morning. Lord, we're not in a rush. Would you have your way in service this morning, God? Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you that in the book of John chapter 11, you said, though we may die one day, we will have eternal life and continue to live in the kingdom of God because we've received salvation in Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that this morning. God, but eternal life is not just for then, it's for here right now. Thank you, Lord, you gave us your Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, is our advocate, our helper, that empowers us day to day to live for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Resurrection Sunday, every Sunday. God, we lift up every prayer request to you this morning. God, we believe your word is eternal. It never returns void. God, we call it out. We speak it out with a heart of faith this morning. God, we thank you in advance for answered prayers this morning in every life. In Jesus' name, God, we lift up salvation in the house this morning. God, I believe there are hearts this morning that have come in here weary. They're going to receive the eternal life you give us. Holy Spirit, would you have your way in service this morning? And we thank you in advance for salvation in Jesus' name this morning. God, as we enter into a time of worship, God, we're going to give you our best praise, our best worship, because you deserve it all this morning, God. You're going to get all the praise. So, Lord, we're going to do it right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said?
future grace that's mine today that Jesus Christ has won so I can face tomorrow tomorrow's in your hands and all I need you will provide just like you
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
give the Lord praise this morning. Thank you for the blood that was shed some 2,000 years ago. But not only that, that three days later he arose and walked out of the grave and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Let's give him praise today. A God who is not dead but is alive, who is coming back for his church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God has been so good and I am so thankful for the blood to understand what it's truly about that before He died on that cross, He took stripes upon His back. And just this week I found out, and most of you have been walking through the journey that uh, we've been walking through this year. The first of the year, um, my liver went crazy. Enzymes went nuts. Uh, had an infection that attacked my liver that just found out that within three months... If they had not done a transplant, or if God didn't heal me, it would have been fatal. But God decided to turn it around. I say that, I say that only for this reason. The same God that I saw do that for me is the same God that will do it for you. All it takes is faith believing in His name and God will work a miracle. I can remember sitting in the hospital room thinking I was going to die. The enemy had told me, You're going to, I'm going to kill you. You're not going to see your grandson that is being born. You're not going to see him this side of heaven. And I was believing that lie. Bridget... That day she went home. I tried to get her to go home and rest. And I really just needed to get along with God and decide what was going to happen. I remember sitting there in that hospital room and thinking this, who in the world can I call that can help me get out of this mess? And I remember thinking, Pastor Mark Correll could help me with this possibly. He's been as close to death as anyone I know. And I went to call him and of course they come in to take vital signs and I didn't call. I laid my phone down in the bed. I'm sitting Indian style on the bed and I'm thinking, Lord, just take me out of here now. And about that time the phone rang. It was Pastor Mark Correll. Now he didn't know I was going to call him, but I tell you who does. Listen, God knows how to put people in your life and you're not here today by accident. You may say that, well, they told me if I go to church I get to eat dinner with them. No, God set you up for this day. God's got great things in store for you this day. So before He does anything else for us, let's go ahead and give Him one more shout, one more shout of praise, and let the devil know today that we are victorious through Christ Jesus, that we are the redeemed, and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Lord, we praise You in this place. We lift up Your holy name, God. We honor You. You are the Savior, the soon coming King, and we give You all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you may be seated if you can find a place there. My apologies uh, that, that we are full. We are maxed out. If you have any room next to you, if you don't mind just kind of moving in or just waving and let our ushers know so that we can get everyone seated. we got people out in the foyer and uh, people displaced in different rooms trying to accommodate. And uh, what a great problem. What a great problem to have. And uh, I'm excited about that problem. I'm excited that you're here. If you're our guest today, we welcome you to the Healing Place Church. I'm Pastor Leslie, and uh, we got a great group here. Yeah, we welcome all of you here today. Uh, we'd like to know that you're here, and uh, if you would fill out the information card there in, in the seat in front of you, if you'll just take a moment. You don't have to do that. Uh, and also, we want you at the end of the service today, if you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, we want to help you with that journey. Uh, I, I'm so thankful that all the way through my life this October... We will celebrate 25 years of full-time ministry, and, uh, and I've needed people beside me, walking with me, praying with me, and you will too. So when you make a decision to serve Jesus Christ, we want to give you a, a new, uh, new follower's book of how to, how to walk that life. It's free to you. We're going to give that to you. And, uh, but we want to walk with you. We want to help you. We want you to know that we're here available for you at any time. We're so glad, so glad that you're here. Uh, those of you that are standing in the back, just look at somebody, and if you see a seat, say, move over, I'm sitting with you today. And if you don't move over, I'm going to sit in your lap. And they'll move over. 
But uh, again, we're so glad that you're here today, and we, we pray that you have a great Easter. We do have quite a few people that are traveling, so those that are watching us, we, we pray that God will give you traveling mercies today and uh, bring you back home safe to us. It's an exciting day. It's been an exciting week. God has blessed us and helped us, and you say, well, Pastor, why do we celebrate Easter? Well, I hope to answer that question for you here in just a moment. But I do want to share some things with you that we do still have a lot of things that are happening here at THP. And if you have not had the chance to ride around our building going this way and come around the back, we cleared the whole mountainside over there. Brother Johnny Riley did an excellent job helping us with that. We had some other guys coming in cleaning. It's going to give you the opportunity to see our amphitheater. Uh, when, we, when we first began, we were going to seat just about 1,500 to 2,000 on this hill. Uh, but God said that's not going to be enough. And God sent us over $400,000 worth of dirt free. Free. And so we were able to fill a big hole. And, uh, and, and the engineer that came out and he saw this site, he said, man, he said, you're going to be able to seat at least five or six more thousand people on this hillside over here. So that's going to be close to seven to 8,000 people that we're going to have the opportunity to seat. You say, well, Pastor, why are you saying that? Look at this. We've got to have somewhere to put you, and I really don't want to build another building. So let's give God praise for outside church. Amen? Don't cost us a thing. You can dress in whatever you want to as long as you got something on. But again, let me say welcome to the Healing Place. We're glad that you are here and glad that you're a part of all the things that we do have going on. I want you to know uh, this morning, as you hear this message and as you leave this building today, know that Easter is something that is more than just hiding eggs or an Easter bunny. I remember as a child growing up, and I know there's children in here, so I'll try to be as cool as I can with it. It always confused me how I had to go to sleep and wait for a bunny to hop into my house and bring me a basket. And he never brought baskets to bad kids, kind of like Santa Claus. So I just believed whatever they told me, because I wanted that basket full of candy. But I believe the world has created, just like they have at Easter or at Christmas, they've created things to keep our attention off of what Easter truly is about. Easter is about a time that brings new beginnings in our life. So the message today I want to talk to you is Easter brings new beginnings. It, it, it gives you a new perspective, and it gives us the opportunity to understand that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but that all would come to have eternal life. And he said after that, John three seventeen, he said, Behold, I sent my Son into the world not to condemn it, but to save that which is lost. So there's a lot of condemnation that happens in our world today. We think that we as the church have it figured out, and if you can live like we live, then you're one of us. Well, I don't believe that. I believe that every person in here is a broken, hurting person in need of a Savior. I know I am. I know that life can change in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. It can all change, and we still need a Savior. So I don't know where you find yourself today. I don't know where you are in the stage of life, but I know this. God, our Father, knows right where you are, and Jesus is right there to meet us. On this Easter, as we celebrate and gather, we gra gather with a heart full of gratitude. And also, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But knowing all of this that took place some 2,000 years ago, we have two great promises I want to give you. Number one, the promise of life over death. We, you and I have the promise of life over death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55 says, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Which means to live is Christ, as Paul said, but to die is gain. So if I die today in Christ, I will go to heaven and will live forever and forever and forever. How many of you have already got loved ones and friends that are already there waiting. They're waiting on us. They've already seen that there is no... I believe if they could speak back to us, they'd say, don't worry about death, it's nothing. There's no sting in it. There's no, there's no power in it because when you leave here to be absent of the body, the Bible says, is to be present with our Lord. But also, if you don't know the Lord, there's also another place called hell. We don't talk about that much, but it's real also. And our job, our whole idea of presenting the gospel is to let you know that you don't have to go there. And it was not designed for us anyway. So we have the redemptive 
life through Jesus Christ. We have the promise of life over death. Now, I had a lady in the first service before it started. She said, Pastor, last year you preached for 20 minutes. Can you do it again this year? I said, for $49.95, I can do about anything. So we're already on point one. Through His resurrection, Jesus' resurrection, Jesus conquered the power of sin and death. And He offered eternal life to us, to all who believe. Now notice, to all that believe. Not to all that attend the right church or a church. Not to all that join a denomination, although we, we push a lot of those things. But all who believe. Believe what? Believe that God the Father loved us so much that He searched the Bible says heaven and earth and could not find one. No, not one, he said, that was worthy to die for the sin of the world except for his son Jesus. So he sent Jesus to us and Jesus lived a life and we see in the last part of his life, the last three years of his life, did great miracles, signs and wonders followed him and they also will follow the believers. But as he went through these great miracles, the church, the religious people, did not like what he was doing and they turned him over to be killed, which was prophesied by Isaiah and also by Joel. And we knew this had to happen. And Jesus even told His disciples, this has to happen for the fulfillment of Scripture. We know that Jesus did not come to do away with the Old Testament. He came to fulfill the Old Testament. So everything that was prophesied had to be fulfilled. And that's what happened. And Jesus walked the Golgotha walkway. He went to the cross. He willingly laid His life down but he also picked his life back up three days later. A lot of times when we talk about Easter, we spend a lot of time at the cross, and the cross is so vitally important. Without the cross, we don't have salvation. But without his resurrection, we have no hope. And because he is resurrected today, you and I have hope. So I like to spend more time at the empty tomb than I do at the cross and what he had to go through. I'm so thankful for that, but let's go ahead and give the Lord praise for the resurrection through Jesus Christ that we have. We have the power. We have the power today over life and over death. The resurrection gives life a new meaning. It gives us new direction. It gives us more opportunity to start over, no matter what the circumstance. So let me just say today, I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what you're doing in life, but you can't do anything bad enough that God will not forgive you. He loves you. He died for you. He didn't die in vain. He loves you. And so we have the power of life and death. The second promise we have is we have the promise of new beginnings. Not only do we have the power of life and death through Jesus Christ, now we can start over and old things that have passed become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Which means when you give your life to Christ, you are a new creation. Now let me go ahead and say this to you. Your flesh doesn't get the memo. You ever got saved? left church, shut the door on the car, your finger happened to be in the door. I've never seen anybody get saved, shut their hand in the car door and go, Oh, how I love Jesus. No, you're pulling, you're snatching, that finger is still in there. And you may or may not use some of that old language you used to have right before you got saved. You'll get in some of the worst fights with your spouse after you get saved. So if today you decide to give your life to Christ, just know you got a big one coming when you get in the car. Why? Because you have an adversary. The Bible says that we have an adversary and he's against you. The Bible says he seeks around whom he may kill, steal, and destroy. So he's not, he's not interested in just playing patty cake with you. He wants to destroy your life. But God said that through Jesus, you can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So we know that life is going to throw us curves and there's going to be things that we're not going to enjoy. And even after you get saved, listen, life doesn't change, you change. So we have to trust Him. We have to know that we have a new beginning spiritually, that we're not headed to the place called hell. Now we're headed to the place called heaven. But in the meantime, there's a lot of things that can happen. I've seen a lot of great people who have been Christians and have served God suffer a lot of great things this side of heaven. But I believe as it is written that I count not this present day suffering to compare to the glories that are to come. You see, there's greater things that are ahead for us, the believer. 
And so I want you to know that today, if you haven't already, you can make today a new beginning. You can decide to leave here today and be different than what you came in, in Jesus' name. Through Jesus Christ, the resurrection, believers are born into a new life characterized by these three things. They're character, characterized by redemption, transformation, and hope. You see, when you're not saved, you don't really have a hope for the future. You may plan for the future, but you don't have a great hope. Because life doesn't really happen until after death. That's when we see the greatest of life. So the resurrection is meant to be a symbol of hope. It's meant to be a symbol of renewal and also of new life. But not only do we have these two great promises, we also have, number three, we have the call to share the good news. This is point three and this is the last point. Come on. It's 11.36. He did it. Now this point could last for three hours if you don't shout. We're on point number three. <laughs> Not only do we have two great promises, but we have the call to share the good news. What good news? Well, the good news that I've been talking about, that we've been singing about, and what is written in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 1. On the screen now, after the Sabbath, at the first day of the week, began to dawn Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven, and he came and he rolled the stone from the door, and he sat upon it, and his countenance was like lightning. His clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the two women, he said, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. So we see the prophecy has been fulfilled. Come and see the place where he laid, since if you don't believe me, walk in the tomb and check it out, and go quickly. Now I love this part. He says, and go quickly. Now here's why, because Jesus has already left the building. Jesus is already walking back to where they're supposed to be going, and he's saying, you need to go quickly, and here's why. And tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. So he's already en route to see the disciples. You need to get there before he shows up. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So the angel of the Lord is telling Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that you need to leave here because not only am I telling you a great truth, I'm showing you a great truth that He is not here and you can physically see that He is not here. He is risen and you need to go because He's en route now to see the disciples. And He's not going to knock on the door and walk in the door. He's about to walk through the walls of that place and He's going to scare the life out of them. That's why I believe when you scare people, it's of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus did it. Now, if you know me, and you work with me, and if I like you, now if I don't like you, I won't scare you much. But I scare everybody because I think it's good, and, and, and it, it adds life to you. It's like getting hit with an AED or something. It's like life comes back. You can, you can see their soul leave and come right back, and it, it's an amazing thing. The resurrection gives us hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us hope. And hope is an anchor for our soul. When everything seems to be going bad, and even unto death what we feel, we know that there is life after death. And I'm going to tell you, since this past year started, and since all the things that took place in my life, I had to really realize and understand. I used to talk a lot about, well... It's better to be there than here. I realized I want to be here a little bit longer than what I thought. I've got a grandson that's going to be born in August. And I remember when the doctor called and said, your liver enzymes have gone up again. We've already pre-registered you in the hospital. You need to get there as soon as you can. The first thing the enemy told me, the night before I found out that my daughter was having our first or our first grandchild. And I was so sick. And the first thing the enemy said to me is you will not see this child, Cooper Leslie. You will not see him. And then I had someone call me. Pastor Randy called. He said, you will see him. And I said, well, I'll see him in the afterlife. But see, the Lord and the enemy are against one another. The enemy is always lying to you. He's always telling you life will not get any better. This is the best that it's going to be. You're not going to be healed. No one's ever been healed of what you've been healed of. But hey, isn't it always good to be one of the first? 
God is great. And God knows what you're going to do with the miracle. So I want to tell you today, the greatest miracle that you and I will ever experience is not a physical healing. It is the gift and the miracle of salvation. You don't have to work for it. The Bible says you're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. So if you think you're saved, if you ever get around a Christian, they want to tell you how saved they are, get away from them because they're not Christian. True Christians are humble, loving, and compassionate. They're not condemning. The Bible says that Jesus did not, God did not send His world, Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. If you're not more concerned about someone's life changing and being saved than you are about fixing them, then you've got just as much of an issue as they do. Listen, you can't even get yourself straight. So stop trying to fix your children. Hear me today. Stop trying to fix your spouse and let God do those things. God is the best at it. And He'll do it in a way to where they will know it's Him and not us. And what do we do in the process? Just love them. Aren't you thankful somebody loved you? You sorry, good for nothing. I mean, you know what I mean. (laughs) Aren't you thankful somebody loved you enough to keep you on their prayer list? I'm thankful today that I had people around me that were praying. People that loved me. And people who are still around me praying today. People who still love me today. In spite of me, they still love me today. And I'm thankful for that. And we have to have one another. We are the family of God. And I'm telling you, just like your immediate family, you got some weirdos in your family too. Don't look next to you. They'll know you know about it. If you're not looking to see who it is, you're the weirdo. <laughs> Listen, church, the Bible says laughter doeth good like a medicine, and we've too long have been eating lemons in the church. I know life can be tough. Life can be hard. Life can even be, at times, unfair. But God is never unfair. He's a just God. He's a compassionate God who loves you in spite of you. No matter how many times you fail, He's still right there with His arms stretched saying, Come home. Say, well, Pastor, you don't know how far I've been. You're never too far that He can't reach you. How do I get to Him? It's very easy. All you got to do is believe. Believe that Jesus came. He lived. He died. He arose. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says how we can be saved is to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. Confess what? Confess that we believe. You see, it's hard for us to believe when the enemy is always telling us the untruth. That God doesn't care about you. Has, has the enemy ever told you that? You can't be saved. You know who you are. You know the thoughts you have. That's the enemy. For God so loved the world that He gave Jesus. Jesus is there waiting on us to accept Him. As we conclude our Easter celebration, let us rejoice in the resurrection. I know that many of you have different things going on today, and I understand that. You've got egg hunts and meals with your family and and family things, but don't forget to stop and pause and thank God that 2,000 years ago, what was prophesied by Joel and Isaiah and the prophets before us happened. Jesus was put in a tomb, but three days later, He arose. As He arose, let us arise. Everybody stand with me. Yeah, give Him praise for life life more abundantly. Church, may His victory over sin and death fill you today with hope, with courage, and a renewed faith that no matter what you face, God's with you. He says, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. He's always there. And here's how close He is. He's as close as the very breath you breathe. And I'll even say it this much further. He's as close as the very thought you have Maybe you've run out of words. You ever prayed and ran out of words? I don't know what else to pray. Just pray Jesus. Just say Jesus. And when you do, the enemy of your soul has to leave. So I want you to do something with me today. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to do anything weird today. 
That'll be next week. If you really want to see some weird, come back next week. Let me say this on behalf of myself and our entire staff and church. If you're our guest today, we welcome you and we're glad you're here. This is who we are. This is what we do every week. There's nothing different. We invite you, if you don't have a home church, come and be part of this one. I can guarantee you one thing, we're going to have fun until we get to heaven. But we're going to fight the enemy together. Together. We're going to pray together. We're going to cry together. We're going to laugh together. We're going to leave together. We're going to pray for our lost loved ones that we always do. And we've had so many get saved this past year. That's what it's all about. But I want you to bow your heads this morning. Close your eyes and just for a moment. I want you to think about your life, not, not anybody else's life. I want you to think about you. And I want you to think, if I were to die right now, which is unlikely, it's possible, but it's unlikely, but if you were to die right now, would you make it to heaven? Now, the only person that truly knows that is you and our Lord Jesus. You know where you stand with Him. But if you can say, you know what, Pastor, I'm really not sure if I were to die now or if the rapture were to take place, that I wouldn't make it to heaven. Well, it's very easy to make that a blessed assurance by one simple prayer. But if you'll say, Pastor, I want to make sure that I'm ready. I want to make sure that I'm ready when He's ready. Will you just lift your hand? Just lift your hand. Yeah, I see hands everywhere. Yeah, I see your hands. You can put them down. Yeah, I see your hands. And Better than that, whether you raise your hand or not, that's really not the most important thing. God sees your heart. He knows if you raised your hand or if you didn't. And I'm not interested in seeing how many numbers we can count. You notice we, we didn't count hands. We're not doing that. Because in heaven, your name will be registered if you pray this prayer. You will be assured a spot if you'll pray this prayer and mean it. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Live in my life and forgive me of all of my sin. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord, as my Savior, but most of all, as my soon-coming King. And to the best of my ability, I will serve you. I will follow you. And when I fail you, I will call out to you again for my salvation. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus, your only begotten Son, who is the only one worthy enough to die for me. I believe that Jesus came. I believe that He lived. I believe that He died. But I also believe that He has risen. Father, thank You today for salvation. Thank You for saving me. Thank You for guiding me and loving me enough to forgive me. In Jesus' name. Now let me just tell you what happened. You may not have prayed the exact words that I just prayed, and you don't have to. But if you prayed a prayer and you said, Father, forgive me, He forgave you. Now the devil's going to say He didn't forgive you. Well, the devil's a liar. The Bible says He's the father of all lies, so He's a liar. He's a deceiver. The Bible says He's the deceiver of the brethren. He's going to try to mess up your thoughts, but you don't go by your thoughts, you go by your heart. And do the best you can to live for Him for the rest of your life. Don't let life consume you. Spencer, we've got to hold fast the confession, the profession of our faith. We've got to believe with everything within us, Charlie, that God doesn't hold our past against us. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And when we hold to that confession, we can face anything that comes up in our life. We can face any trial, any sickness, any problem. Why? Because He lives. He's alive. He's the only God that has ever came and died and lived after death. He's the only one. He's the only one that they buried and they couldn't keep Him in the tomb. He wasn't stolen. He left that place because He lives. So I want us to do something today. Since we've prayed this prayer, let's sing this together. Because He lives. Can we do that?
As I mentioned earlier, if you made a decision today to follow Christ, you made a decision that made the enemy mad. And as I said, he's, he doesn't fight fair. That's why we need each other to fight together. If you will take time today, nobody's going to see this but me and my staff, but there's a card that looks just like this. I know this seems so commercial. But if you'll take time and give us your name, and I will personally contact you this week. We're going to be praying for you, but also we want to make sure that you get this in your hand. This is a free book from us to you, the New Believer's Handbook. We want you to take this home inside the front cover. There's a way to contact us and the staff, and we're available at any time. Because we know how hard it is to live in this ungodly world. But I can tell you this, we can live victorious if we trust it. Don't ever give up. Fight to the very end. Believe with all you've got within you. And don't let anything cause you to miss out on what God is doing. So before we leave, let me pray a blessing over you. Let's bow our heads one more time. Father, as we prepare to leave this building, we know that God, You are well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or even think. So I ask You, Father, for those who have given their life to You maybe for the first time, or maybe they've rededicated their life to You, God, that You will be with them, that You will comfort them and walk with them, but never let them feel alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give God praise this morning? He's worthy of it all. Amen. Walking with Jesus is real. It's tangible. He gives You His Word to be a light to Your path. And, uh, man, we're so encouraged this morning. We always end our service by praying for an opportunity to share the gospel with someone. And then we pay, pray over the finances of the house. So would you guys join us right now? We'll be dismissed. Let's pray over those two things. God, we thank you for an opportunity this morning to be in your presence, Lord. Life is filled with multiple moments. And God, I pray that this wouldn't be the last moment that someone turns to you. God, I pray it's the beginning. And God, we have victory that started 2,000 years ago. I pray, Holy Spirit. You would confirm the word that we've received this morning, God, and that we'd be encouraged. You would last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until next Sunday, God, when they show back up. Holy Spirit, would you strengthen us as we leave today, Lord? We pray for an opportunity this week to share the love we've received with someone we know in Jesus' name. God, I pray for boldness and courage to do that very thing. And God, last but not least, God, we pray over the finances of the house. God, I pray that you bless every individual as we give and worship in giving according to your word by paying tithe and offering above that. Thank you that you're a giver, Lord. And God, it's by faith that we give and it's by faith that we receive from you in obedience to your word. So may we steward that well. And God, we thank you for the blessings according to your word. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone as they leave. Thank you for the word we've received this morning. We give you all the praise, glory, and honors in Jesus' name. We do pray and everyone said, amen. We love you. Happy Easter. You bring what he